As many of you remember that it was last fall that we sent Bo away for six weeks to, uh, to go to, uh, what do they call it, doggy obedience school, to be a smart dog. Hey guys, oh, hey, Bo. Hey, Bo is hey, home, Bo. he is an official oh, smart dog now. Such a good boy. It's time to begin your yeah. training, enjoy your well-trained dog. Wow, look at that. Go forth and make us proud, the little man. <laughs> and you called it college, I called it reform school. <laughs> but he's a very good dog. It's been quite a while now since Bo was trained and uh, he still remembers all 16 commands. He is a terrific dog and we thought we would give you a quick update on uh, how he's doing since he had his training and also share with you a couple of things we found that we think really help with safety when we're traveling around the country in our RV and Bo is with us. First, Bo wants to show off a bit for you. Here's how he does with healing. Here's how he does with sit and stay. Sit, stay, oh stay, stay, good boy. Stay, Bo come. Bo sit. Good boy, good boy. Most of the time, we let Bo walk freely on a six-foot leash. He's trained not to pull or tug, even when something unexpected happens, like a deer appears right in front of him. Did you see that deer? So what was really interesting about that is uh, I let Bo approach the deer, on his leash, of course, but... He approached the deer, he did not tug, he did not pull. Uh, we walked towards the deer, and even when the deer finally bolted and took off, Bo didn't charge after him. I smelt what the deer was. Now, I think it would have been different if I had let him off the leash, but uh, he knows when he's on a leash, he obeys me. And uh, that's, that's a pretty good investment, the cost of all that training. It's well worth it. Um, here's some, some more examples. The training keeps Bo very well adjusted. We take him to a lot of places with us, even meetings where he calmly lies down. We can even leave him with strangers and other dogs like we did for a few minutes at the road trek factory in Canada not long ago. And he's been happy to be part of the little... We start almost every day at the dog park because the key to a well-behaved, happy dog is letting them get rid of that excess energy. Now, if you do let your dog go in salt water, it is important that you rinse that salt water off. It's not good to stay on their fur, so find a place where you can put a hose on them and at least get that salt water off. Twice a day, we try to give them at least an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours of being able to run free, as well as mental stimulation, meeting other dogs, taking them new places where he sees new things, new experiences. It's all good for using up his energy. You know, the other thing about taking Bo different places, different parks, is it's good for us. We really have a great time. We uh, get to uh, enjoy our time with the dog, and yet uh, we're having fun together, and we're all, all three of us, seeing new places and having new experiences. But that's not to say we haven't had problems. Here's a video we shot a while back explaining. So. 
we have a dilemma on our hands, and it has to do with Bo. Except he's really not on our hands, he's on Jennifer's lap. Bo is now afraid to ride in the back of the road track. Why do we think he's afraid? Because the refrigerator door has come open because it wasn't properly latched, and then things start falling out on the floor. Uh, the drawers, if you don't secure them properly, will fly open when you make a turn. Cushions slide off, and it's just too scary back there. So it's kind of imprinted on his little Alcon brain. That, that it's scary back there. And we're not quite sure what to do because he used to ride really well, but now he either cowers and presses against us up here, um, or he pushes his way out to Jennifer's lap. And that's and not that's safe. That's not safe, and I'm sure it's against the law. And we show him the third seat, and he just refuses to take it. He that's wants the seat that I am in. And to tell you the truth, having a 60 pound dog half sitting on my lap, I am about ready to go for the third seat. Third seat remains vacant, so we're thinking maybe we need a seat belt for the dog. I'm not sure how that works, but uh, we got a problem with an elk hound who does not like riding in the road track all of a sudden. Hope we can fix that up. He's just a lap dog at heart. He is just a lap dog at heart. The spoiled prince of a lap dog. But we want to take him, but we can't drive across the country like that. So thanks to a company called Mighty Paw, we picked up a dog seat belt restraint and a special harness for Bo that attaches to it. Now, Bo can sit comfy and secure in the third seat. This is the solution. He's safe. He can look out the window. If he wants to lay down, he can. He's not going to get hurt. He's not going to be shifting gears on us. He's not trying to sit in my lap. I wish we would have found this years ago. So we solved that problem. That left just one more issue we needed to resolve. One of the biggest problems we RVers who travel with our pets have is being confident that it's cool in here when we're off doing something. That is where this comes in. This is the RV pet safety temperature monitor. Now we have tried several other monitoring systems over the years, but this one, which is a bit pricey at 299 bucks, is the best one we have found yet. Let me show you how it works. A mounting plate with an adhesive back attaches it to any hard surface. The monitor itself fits securely inside. I put mine on the back over the rear sofa and bed area where the unit reads the temperature and sends it out to an app via a cellular signal. That app in turn lets you instantly see the temperature inside your RV and can be programmed to send you a text alert whenever the temperature exceeds the limit you set. I set mine for 85 degrees. Okay, time for a test. The temperature, as you can see, is a little over 73. Let's turn the air off and see what happens. Okay, I have left the vehicle closed up with no air on it, and it has been in the sun here in Florida for about 10 minutes. And the temperature is now, it just sent me an alert, 102.6 degrees. That is how short of a period of time it took to go to 102. 10 minutes in the sun. That's why this device is so handy. So what that means is we have freedom to confidently leave him in the RV for a while and do other things. So our travels with Bo have been pretty awesome, except for that little time when we had the problem with the refrigerator open and Bo getting a little chicken. Well, that was pretty traumatic for him, pretty stressful for a dog. And now I think we have solved that problem. I'm particularly excited about um, having that temperature monitor in there 
and having it send me those alerts. I feel really confident now that we can go out to dinner, uh, we can uh, uh, leave them to go shopping a little bit, and if the temperature starts to creep up, we're going to know about it right away. We need that. We need we that. Genuinely need one, a monitor that works. Hey, if you travel with the dog, uh, we have a book, uh, a free guide, a dog traveling in an RV guide just for you, and it's free. Uh, maybe I should put, it, put the address on the screen. So, boom, right there. That's the address. If you go there, uh, you can get an instant download. There's no cost or anything, but it's some of the things that we've learned, uh, some of the products that we've heard about that we think work pretty good that we have uh, been uh, using with our dogs as we've been traveling in our RV for almost seven years now. Hey, if you like this video, would you do us a big favor and give us a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to our RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. We're Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.